is just fantastic. Captain's Log, Subdate 220426.8 The perp that is being placed within the ISO cubes today has a number of judges baffled. Some are even conflicted. Others want to reward the inmate with extra neutral loaf slices. I do, however, wonder if my audience will feel the same way once I tell them what they're in for. Welcome everyone to the Halls of Injustice. Today we welcome inmates number something that I've completely forgotten, yes that happens from time to time, called Shane Goldsby to the ISO cubes. Fun fact though for Shane, he was already here, just not within this video series, when he committed additional crimes. Because of time constraints this week, I'm not going to be able to format this the way I have done previously. So instead we are going to go straight through who he is, what he did, what happened next, and the fallout. There is something amusing about this because any prisoner that commits a crime in prison, yes, you do need a good chuckle about it, because chances are somebody goofed when a mistake like this happens, and you'll certainly understand when we get to it. Soon, Shane Goldsby was once a gang-banging man on the outside world, known everywhere because of one crime that he committed that got him put in prison in the first place. He is now a man of God a 26-year-old converted Christian, very devoted to his faith that is about to be challenged. In 2017, he rose to notoriety in 2017 because he stole a police car. He was, at the time, a stabbing suspect. When he stole the car, he led the law enforcement on a lengthy pursuit. Cowlitz County Sheriff's deputies tried to throw out spikes to slow him down. Goldsby noticed, though, stopped the vehicle and put it in reverse, which backed it into a pursuing Washington State Patrol vehicle. When he was eventually captured, he was at the time wanted for two counts of felony assault, theft in the first degree, and several hit and runs. As you can tell, good Christian material right here. A cracking gang banger. The car was eventually found somewhere abandoned in a wooded and remote area in Kelso. So if you can work out yet why Shane Goldsby ended up in prison in the first place, this might go some way as to explain it. And yes, he is clearly a role model, one that is deserving of all your respect. Please show your respect by smashing the like and leaving a comment. Thank you. Oh, and sharing the video. I should now insert, I could not find through any article how long he was sentenced for for what he did. One article though did say another with the sentence he gets for the next crime, which implies he gets a lengthy sentence for the first crime. When we get to that, I will then obviously explain it further. It is not well, it isn't really relevant right now. Before ending up at the Airway Heights Correctional Facility, Goldsby had been transferred to multiple facilities owing to his poor behaviour. But since he's found God, everyone, he's calmed it right down. So now what I'd like to do is move from 2017, when he committed his crime, to June 2020, where we now insert his cellmate, Robert Munger. Munger? Munger? M-U-N-G-E-R. Robert Munger was serving a 43-year prison sentence at the Airway Heights Correctional Facility for being a nonce. Essentially, multiple child molestation and child pornography charges. He was, at the time, 70 years old. So there was very little chance of him getting out of prison any time soon. While sharing a cell with Shane Goldsby, he would brag about his crimes. He would brag about who he did things to, what he did to them, and then he reached a point where there was no going back, because he had alluded to a victim of his noncery. The victim in question, though, is where this story takes a real swerve. You see, the victim, allegedly, was Shane Goldsby's underage sister. When an inmate is being booked in, they have histories. There are departments that exist solely to make sure there are less conflicts for example, gang affiliation is one, but they also make it a point to look for anything that could tangibly connect people in such a way that they may well get violent towards one another. Shane Goldsby, upon finding out that this nonce had touched his sister, spoke to the facility about being transferred because of what he knew. He gave them a year's notice, in fact. He gave them ample opportunity to move him so that he would not inflict unnecessary pain upon somebody that he also believed deserved it. 
I say unnecessary. I know someone's going to say, Oh, but it's necessary. We are going to have to agree to disagree here. I want him to live all 43 years in prison. Sorry, I would have wanted. In this context, the prison failed. They failed a very, very basic thing, where all they had to do was do a history of the victims of Robert Munger, and they would have gotten Shane Goldsby's sister. In June 2020, while in the prison common area, Munger was bragging about his crimes. Goldsby had decided he had had enough and the prison had had its opportunity to rectify this problem. He took his faith, put it to one side, and simply clarted Robert Munger from behind, knocking him to the ground before punching and kicking him in the face 14 times then stomping on his head another four times before walking away. Three days later, Robert Munger died from his injuries, which meant Shane Goldsby faced a whole new problem called murder. Shane Goldsby is quoted as saying, I had so much stuff going on in my head. I wasn't stable at that point. I wasn't. I was getting to that point because Robert Munger kept wanting to give me details about what happened, what he did, about the photos and the videos of him doing this stuff. It was building up. When he was asked about the request to change, cellmate that is, and he was declined, he said that I was in shock. I was like, what the F? This stuff doesn't happen. You are talking the same institution, the same unit, the same pod in the same cell as this dude. That's like hitting the jackpot in the casino seven times. All of that, by the way, came from an interview with KHQ, and I can play a short clip of that now. Position that I've I shouldn't even be in to begin with, you know? This shouldn't, this shouldn't have happened at all, okay? You talking this dude that did some sick, twisted things to my little sis, okay? And you want to put me face to face with this dude, okay? Between all that going in my head, then, then thinking about this is a set I won't deny when you're put in a situation that Shane's put in, it does look a bit sus, especially on the corrections facility that is supposed to have safeguards to prevent things like this from happening. Now granted, prevent doesn't mean guaranteed not happening. Thank you to that one person who will leave that one comment. I really appreciate it. But that system is supposed to be there regardless. When this went to trial, Shane Goldsby pleaded guilty to second degree murder charges for beating his cellmate to death. During that trial, Shane Goldsby issued an apology. He wasn't able to finish the entire apology, it was to Robert Munger's family, where his statement reads as follows. I cannot imagine what it would be like to lose a loved one in this kind of way. To his wife and his whole family, I apologize. I am so sorry, and I hope you are able to heal from what I have caused. Something about that, while genuine from him because he had to get his lawyer to finish it, feels strange to me, the viewer, the reader, the judge. Because to me, you're saying sorry to somebody who they already lost when they became a nonce and got sentenced to 43 years for their noncery. Let's face it, they were barely going to see that relative ever again. If they were still on good terms with this relative, I'm a tad confused. But that's just me. For this crime, Shane Goldsby was sentenced to 25 years in prison. Now, it could have been 33 years. The very first article I saw on this said another 25 years at the start, which to me implied, as I earlier mentioned, that he was already doing a lengthy term for his joyride and injuries to state troopers. The only thing I don't know for certain is whether or not Shane Goldsby will be serving 25 years and then 25 years, or whether his 25 years is partially concurrent with the other sentence he was serving, if that makes any sense at all. I do hope you understand now why some of this might seem a tad conflicting. For many people who will see this and think, he may have done some joyriding, been a bit of a gangbanger, reformed himself, but he took a nonce off the table. That's what some people will say. Many, in fact. We cannot condone violence. We really can't. There is a failing from the system itself, 100%, and those people should be rightly punished for it. And I would not at all be surprised if the Munger family sued the facility for failing to protect somebody that was under their care. It is a form of negligence after all, and somebody will undoubtedly have to foot that bill. With the nature of this crime, with the outcome of it, 
I would love to know what you all think, so please do let me know in the comments down below. Just as a heads up, next week back to regular Avatar, I promise, it was just I really don't have the time this week, sorry. Hope you all have a fantastic day everyone, and thank you very much for listening.